Да. Давай. Okay, so when I'm presenting my slide show, I can't see you guys at the same time. So if you have a question and I'm, you know, just motoring on, you got to break in, you got to unmute yourself and say, whoa, I can't see that, or I don't know what's going on or something, okay? So don't assume that you, because you're waiting frantically, I can see you. I only have one screen and it's uh, hard to see. All right, so here we go. You should be able to see my presentation here. You see it there? All right. All right, took a couple seconds there. All right, so. The first thing I'm going to do is just kind of explain what happens when you have a piece of glass which is shaped like this. So you guys probably know by now that if I send a beam of light at my glass right there, it's going to refract as it passes into the glass. It's going to get bent a little bit. And then it's going to get bent a little more as it exits and it's going to go in that direction. Okay? And, and the reason is you can kind of imagine this part right here kind of like a prism, right? It's kind of two sides that aren't parallel and so they bend the light and then it comes bent a little more there okay so a piece of glass which is shaped like this will cause light which hits near the top to bend in this direction right what happens though if light comes in this direction well it's going to get bent as it passes into the glass and then it's going to get bent as it leaves the glass and it's going to go in that direction what happens to a beam of light that comes all the way out here near the edge? Well, because the sides, there's a bigger angle between the sides here, it gets bent a little more, and it ends up going in that direction. And then what happens if one comes straight at the middle? So if the, uh, the beam of light is coming perpendicular to the edge of the glass, I think you guys probably know that it doesn't get bent at all. It just goes straight through without getting bent. So, Andres, tell me what you notice about all four of these beams of light that hit this piece of glass. Uh, all the lines kind of form a cone. Yeah, and they all converge at a point right here. Okay, you guys see that? So, we probably played with this thing for uh, many years. We call it a magnifying glass. A magnifying glass is a piece of glass which is shaped just like that, and it causes all the rays of the sun, which hit it, to get bent so they go to one place. So all the rays of the sun, the sun is obviously much farther away. The rays are parallel. When they hit your magnifying glass, they get bent, and they all converge right there. So that spot right there gets all of the sun's energy. All the energy that was spread out over here is now concentrated on that tiny little dot. And that makes that little dot very bright and very hot. In fact, you probably burn leaves. Or maybe you did. Or maybe you snuck up behind your brother and focused it on his shoulder and he like, yelled. Maybe it was your little brother. Your big brother beat you up. Anyway, that's what's going on here. This piece of glass has been shaped in a special way to cause all the beams of light that strike it to go to one place. Now, that assumes that these beams of light are all going in a special direction. So imagine the beam of light that goes to the very middle without getting bent. We are going to call that our axis. And all the light that's parallel to it, see this beam here and this beam and this beam and this beam, they're all parallel to this middle axis. As long as the light beams are parallel, they get bent to the middle. If they're close to the middle, they don't get bent much. If they're close to the edge, they get bent a lot, but they all end up in the middle. We call this the focal point or the focus of the parallel rays, all right? So the distance from the lens to the point where all these beams of light meet, that is called the focal length of the lens. It's the distance the light travels from the lens to the point of convergence, to the focal point. So the focal point is where the light rays converge. The focal length is the distance that point lies from the lens, okay? 
Any questions? Now, the light rays don't stop there unless you've got a piece of paper. If there's nothing there, they just continue going upwards. There's other kinds of lenses, and you can shape lenses in different ways. This kind of lens doesn't cause the beams of light to come to a point. It actually causes them to spread out. And the farther they are from the middle of the lens, the more they get bent. So what you end up with is rays of light over here spreading out, looking like they came from a point. So this is called a diverging lens. It makes the light rays diverge. This is called a converging lens. The light rays all converge at a point. Okay, so converging lenses call light to converge. That's what we're going to call them. However, if you get help online or you look at some other textbooks and stuff, another name for a converging lens is called a convex lens. So if you see the word convex lens, it's not a new kind, just the same thing that we're already talking about. I'm going to use the word converging, but you'll see convex sometimes. A diverging lens is also called a concave lens. I'm going to skip this part because it's kind of what we did in labs. So here's an example of how you use a lens. All right, so try a little experiment for me here. Uh, turn and face the window there. Hold your finger up about three inches from your eye and focus on your finger. Is your finger nice and clear? Closer, Carly. Now. Stare at something really far away, outside. Did it take a second to focus on it? Switch your focus from your finger to something really far away, back and forth a couple times. Do you notice it takes a couple seconds for your finger to come in focus? What's happening is your eyeball is actually changing its focal length. Your eyeball is amazing. You've got this little lens right here. And you can change the thickness of this lens and where it focuses the light. When you're looking at something far away, you've got to make this lens thin. When you're looking at something really close, you've got to make this lens thick. And your muscles do it without even your help or actually without you knowing about it. They just automatically do it. But it takes a, a second or two for that to happen. And that's why you can, kind of, you can kind of feel there's something weird happening when you're trying to focus on something close and then when you're trying to focus on something really far away. So, your eyeball changes its focal length. When you're staring at something far away, it bends the light beams so they meet right back here on the retina. If you focus on something close, it's got to get fatter so it bends the light more so it goes on the retina. When you get old, you can't change the lens thickness very much. It gets stiffer, and that's why old people can't focus on things that are very close. They start reading farther and farther away. You need glasses when you get older. Um, so your eyeball is a lens that can change its focal length by actually tugging on it with muscles. It's pretty cool. We'll come back and talk about the eye a little bit later on Friday when we talk about vision. All right, so here's kind of a summary of what we know so far, I think. Refraction can be used to bend light, and that allows us to make lens images, okay? An image is real, whoops, an image is real if the light rays actually converge. And I'll talk about what a non-real or a virtual image is in a little while. Right now, we're going to stick to real images. So what I want to do is I want to show you what happens when we solve a problem geometrically. So you're going to need your paper there, OK? So go ahead and get your paper out. You're going to need a straight edge or a ruler. We're going to work through a geometric problem together. So today, you're going to need two sheets of paper for the two examples, and then three for the homework. And then tomorrow you'll need three more for the homework. Now you guys have got to break in and stop me when I go too fast, okay? It's really hard to kind of watch. I can't really see your paper and what you're doing like you would if you're in class. So if I'm going too fast, say, whoa, slow down, all right? All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to think about a 20 centimeter converging lens. That means the focal length of the lens is 20 centimeters. That means that if you were to take it outside in the sun, 20 centimeters from the lens is where the hot spot would be. Okay? And we're going to put this on a lab table and we're going to put a candle 40 centimeters away. The candle is five centimeters tall and we're going to try to trace the rays of light and figure out where the heck they go. All right, 
Now I've got the problem up here in the top right corner. So what I want you to do is take your paper, put the horizontal line horizontally, and right down the middle of your page, carefully on a grid line, draw a vertical line, and that's gonna be our lens. We're, that's gonna represent the piece of glass that's gonna bend our light. So put that right on one of the grid lines. It'll make your life a whole lot easier. Okay, you good? Evan, you good? All right. Now, we're going to set up the problem. We're going to use a scale because you have blocks on your page. Um, and this is going to be our scale, okay? We are going to use in the X direction. So look at the bottom left corner here. In the X direction, we're going to let every block be two centimeters. And in the Y direction, we're going to let every two blocks be one centimeter. Okay? So in the X direction, every block is two centimeters. So if the lens has a focal length of 20 centimeters, that's going to be represented by 10 blocks. So what I want you to do is count 10 blocks on either side of your lens, make a little tick 10 blocks away on either side, and label that F. That's the focal point. That's where the light is going to get bent to if it's coming parallel. So 10 blocks on either side. And by the way, if you have a ruler, I think there are six blocks per inch. So instead of counting a bazillion blocks, every inch is six blocks. So two inches would be 12 blocks. So just measure tw two inches and then come back two blocks. It's a quick way to do it. All right, everybody good? All right, now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw our candle. And we're gonna represent our candle with an, an arrow, okay? So what we're gonna do is our candle is 40 centimeters away from the lens. We call that the distance to the object. So 40 centimeters from the lens on the left side, we're going to draw an arrow. So our arrow is going to look like this. Every block is 2 centimeters, so 40 centimeters is 20 blocks. So count 20 blocks from the lens to the left. That's where your arrow goes. And then our object, our candle, is 5 centimeters tall. And since we're using Block every centimeter, that's going to be two, four, six, eight, ten blocks tall. So, this is our candle. This is our thing that's sending out light in every direction. So, to count 20 blocks to the left, three inches would be 18 blocks. So then just go two more, three inches plus two more. And it's 10 blocks high, so that's six plus four. All right, got your object on there? Everybody okay? All right, now, take a look at my screen for a minute. This object is a candle. It's sending out light in every direction. There's a beam of light going this way. We don't care about it. There's a beam of light going that way. We don't care about it. We're going to look at three special beams. Okay. One of the beams goes that way. It goes parallel to the axis. And if it goes that way, it gets bent through the focal point. So we're going to draw that beam of light. Okay. So draw a straight line parallel to your grid. That's why we're using grid paper. And when it hits the lens, it gets bent through the focal point. It's going to go that away. All right, so that's one of the three special beams of light. There's a lot more. We're just picking out three. They're called the principal rays.
All right, you good? And go ahead and just draw it all the way off the edge of your page. That light beam doesn't magically stop when it gets to the focal point. That's just the direction it gets bent. It keeps going forever. All right. Now, there are other beams of light. One beam of light leaves the candle and goes this way, and maybe it hits the lens here. And if it does, the lens is going to bend it, but the problem is I don't have an easy way of figuring out which way it bends it. All I know is that a beam of light going parallel gets bent through the focal point. But I also know that the beam of light that hits the middle of the lens doesn't get bent at all. So we can draw that one. It just goes straight. It doesn't get bent at all if it hits the middle of the lens. So the beam of light that goes through the middle doesn't get bent. You can just carefully line it up with the tip of your arrow and the center of your lens and just draw a straight line off to the right and down. Okay, you got that one? Okay, now, there's one more beam of light that we can figure out easily. So take a look at my diagram again. If a beam of light comes parallel, it gets bent through the focal point. But this works in reverse also. If it was coming from the focal point, if it was going this way and hit the lens, it would get bent parallel. So it turns out that light that comes from the focal point gets bent parallel. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw the beam of light that goes through this focal point because nothing magic happens at the focal point. It's just a direction. But the beam of light that goes this way when it hits the lens, it was coming from the direction of the focal point. So it's going to get bent parallel along the grid. So go ahead and draw that beam. Start at the top of your candle through the focal point till you hit the lens. The lens bends the light parallel. And those three beams of light all cross in the same place. At least they should. If they didn't, you have a sloppy diagram. Don't want to call anybody out. Actually, I can't because I can't see your diagram. So that place where they all three cross, that is where the image forms. So what we are going to do is draw an image. We're going to draw a candle starting at the optical axis. It's upside down. So I think you saw that in lab, right? The image was upside down. It's located right where these three lines converge. And then once you draw your image, you can count blocks and you can tell me how tall it is and how far from the lens it is. We call the distance from the lens the distance to the image, and we call how tall it is the height of the image. So go ahead and draw your image there. Count the blocks over to it and use your scale to figure out how far it is from the lens, and then figure out how tall it is. And you can go ahead and write that right on your paper. The distance to the image equals and the height of the image equals. And then we'll pick on somebody here to tell us what they got. When you've got an answer, click the little raise hand button so I know you've got it. Nobody has it yet. You're all just scared I'm going to ask you if you raise your hand. All right, Evan, good job. How many blocks away from the lens is it, Evan? Um, I got 40 blocks or 80 centimeters. 40 blocks? Oh, no. How far is it from the lens? Not from the, uh, not from the other camera. Oh. So would that be 20? 
Yeah, 20 blocks or 40, 40 centimeters. centimeters. So we would say the distance to the image from the lens is 40 centimeters. Anybody else get it? Oh, there, how tall is it? Uh, 10 blocks, so I think what, five centimeters. Yeah, it's five centimeters tall. There you go. So here's what we can tell from our geometric solution. The height of the image is five centimeters. And because it's upside down, I'm going to put a negative on that. You guys see where I am over here on the left? The height of my, the height of my image is five centimeters, and it's upside down, so I say negative five. And the distance to my image is 40 centimeters. And we got that geometrically, okay, by drawing a diagram and drawing the rays of light and where they went, okay? And if you got 39 or 42 or 38, that's okay. Depending on how carefully you draw these lines, you might get this right there or slightly off a bit. But you should be pretty close to 20 blocks away, 40 centimeters, within a block or so, okay? All right. So that's how we solve it geometrically. That's how we trace the rays of light. It's called a ray diagram. Now, there are other rays of light. A ray of light which goes this way will get bent, and it will also end up there. But I didn't know in advance which way it would get bent. The only thing I know is that if the ray of light is parallel, it gets bent towards the focal point. If it's not parallel, I don't know which way it gets bent. So the one that goes parallel goes through the focal point. The one that goes through the middle of the lens doesn't get bent. And the one that heads through the focal point and then hits the lens gets bent parallel. Okay? And those all three converge. All right, I've saved this for you, but you have an example now too. One other thing we talk about is the magnification. How big is the image compared to the object? Well, in this case, the image and the object are the same size, so we say the magnification is one. But because the image is upside down, we're going to tack a negative on there, okay? So we would say the magnification is negative one. So how we find the magnification? We take the height of the image, we divide it by the height of the object, and that ratio is the magnification. If the image was twice as big, the ratio would be two. We would say the magnification is two, which is kind of what you mean, right? Magnification of two means twice as big. All right, so here's our three rules that we're going to use. And I've saved these on the homework, so don't feel like you need to laboriously write them down. But any ray that is parallel to the optical axis is bent through the focal point. Any ray that goes through the center of the lens is not bent. And the ray that comes from the focal point is bent parallel. Okay, those are our three rules. Now, let's talk about lab for a minute. So let me skip through. This is the people who did the real lab. Here's the simulated lab. This is what you guys got for part one. You made the focal length of your lens three centimeters. You changed the distance to the object. You measured the distance to the image, and you found a math model. Does that look familiar? Yeah, I think I stole Evan's data on this one. I'm not sure. I changed the titles a little bit. I dropped his data into my template. All right, so what we want to do is figure out what that means. Well, on the left side, we have 1 over the distance to the image. The slope was pretty close to negative 1. So we're going to have 1 over the distance to the image equals negative 1 over the distance to the object plus, and this number right here, 0.33, turns out that number is 1 over the focal length. When we made the focal length 3, we got 0.33. So the intercept is 1 over the focal length. So this is the math model you got in lab. I'm going to bring this term to the other side, which makes it positive, and it looks like this. So this equation here is the math model that you guys discovered in lab. 1 over the distance to the image plus 1 over the distance to the object is equal to 1 over the focal length. Now, we do that again in lab for a 5-centimeter converging lens. And when you did it with a 5-centimeter converging lens, the intercept was 0.2. Again, 1 over 5 is 0.2. This intercept is 1 over the focal length. Other than that, we got the exact same math model. So it turns out that this is how you describe mathematically the relationship between the distance to the image, the distance to the object, and the focal length of the lens, all right? 
So that's summarized right there. All right, now there's one more thing to look at. Um, if you look at your diagram, we had a whole bunch of rays of light. I've highlighted a couple of them. Okay, can you guys see the yellow highlighting there? So this line right here through the middle didn't get bent. And it forms two triangles. See the two triangles? These two triangles, this angle is the opposite interior to that angle of two straight lines. And so these two angles are the same. Since these two angles are the same here and here, and this is a right angle and that's a right angle, because that's true, we say that this triangle and that triangle are congruent. Okay? So because they are congruent, it means the length of this side, excuse me, the length of this side, the height of the image, divided by the length of this side, the height of the object, has got to be the same as the length of this side divided by the length of that side. That's one of the properties you learned back in geometry about congruent triangles. The ratios of their sides are all the same. All right? So we can write it like this. This side, the height of the image, divided by this side, the height of the object, that's what we call the magnification. That is the same as the distance to the image, that's this side, divided by the distance to the object, that's this side. So a relationship for congruent triangles tells us that the magnification is the height of the image over the height of the object, which is the same thing as the distance to the image divided by the distance to the object. Okay? And we tack a negative on here just because we are going to call downwards negative. So there's an asymmetry. This is positive. This is negative, even though the distances are both positive. So we're going to put a negative on there. Okay? So those two ideas, the idea from lab and this idea of congruent triangles, get us to the equations we're going to use. So take two minutes here and jot this in your toolbox. It's the last thing that goes in our toolbox for unit 10. The first equation is the relationship between the distance to the image and the distance to the object. And the second equation is the height of the image and the height of the object. So go ahead and take a minute to write that down. H is our heights, D are distances. The subscripts are either I or O, image or object. Yep, looks like Carly popped out and popped back in. Are you there, Carly? Your computer died. Oh, no. Probably got the coronavirus. You need the antiviral software. All right. So are you are you on your phone, Carly, while you're waiting for your computer to charge? You must be. Okay. All right. So what I want to do now is show you how to use these equations to solve the problem we just solved, except now we're going to solve it algebraically. Okay? All right, so here's the problem again, right here. We've got a 20 centimeter converging lens. So help me here, guys. Um, Lexi, what is 20 centimeter converging lens? What is that telling us? What piece of information is that? Is that the distance to the object or the focal length? Um, the distance to the object. Um, not quite. A 20 centimeter converging lens. So this is, this is a little bit tricky. When you see a length associated with a lens, it's actually telling you the focal length, okay? So the focal length is 20 centimeters. So 40 centimeters, see over here it says the object is five centimeters tall and 40 centimeters from the lens. That 40 centimeters is the distance to the object there, okay? See that? 
And then this five centimeters is the height. Is it the height of the object or the image? Andres? Uh, the height of the object? Yeah, so the height of the object is five centimeters. And then we don't know the distance to the image yet. And we don't know the height of the image yet. We're gonna try to find those, okay? All right, so here we go. If I wanna find the distance to the image, I'm gonna start off by using this equation. One over the focal length equals one over the distance to the object plus one over the distance to the image. I've gotta solve that mess for the distance to the image, all right? Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is subtract one over DO from both sides. If I do that, I get one over DI is one over F minus one over DO. But that's not what I want. I don't want one over DI, I want DI. So in order to take find DI, I've gotta take the reciprocal of the left side to get DI in the numerator. So that means I've gotta take the reciprocal of the right side also. And so it ends up looking like this. To get DI by itself, you gotta take one over this mess. So one over one over DI is DI. But one over this mess, it's not just F minus D. It's one over one minus F minus one over D. So that's how we're gonna solve it algebraically. It's a little ugly, but you can figure it out. We're gonna plug in our numbers. F is 20, D is 40. So go ahead and do this on your calculator and see what you get for a result. So make sure you group all of the numerators and denominators or go ahead and just do the bottom first and then when you get your answer, take one over it. And once you've got it, hold your calculator up to the camera. See if anybody's got it. Um, Carly's got it. Evan, something. Oh yeah, Evans is right. You're in scientific notation. Yep, that's right. You guys got it. Lexi, do you have it there? You should get forty. I got like zero point zero zero two five. Like I was not. You got to take one over that now. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, you you did the bottom. You did one over f minus one over d, and now take one over that. So it's like it's a whole bunch of one overs. You get forty okay, there. Now I got it. Yeah. Excellent. So when you do all that, you get 40, okay? Now, this doesn't surprise you because that's the answer we already got from our geometric solution, right? We figured out the distance to the image was 40 centimeters based on our diagram, but this confirms it, okay? So that's how you can solve it algebraically. The second thing I wanna know is what is the size of the image or the height of the image? So I'm gonna use the fact that the height of the image over the height of the object is equal to minus the distance to the image over the distance to the object. I know the distance to the image is 40. I know the distance to the object is 40. I know the height of the object is five. I can solve for HI. Algebraically, you just multiply both sides by HO. That cancels the HO here, puts it on this side. Plug in your numbers, and you don't even need a calculator to get that. It's negative five. And again, you're not surprised because we got that answer from our geometric solution. Our algebraic solution is just confirming it, okay? Right, does that, does that sort of make sense? So we're gonna solve these problems two ways. We're gonna make a diagram, a geometric solution, and then we're gonna make an algebraic solution, and they should agree, okay? The algebraic one will be more accurate if there's a discrepancy, but your geometric solution should be pretty close. All right, let me solve one more example problem with you. So get a fresh piece of paper. In the top right corner, write example two. So this is example number two. When you draw your lens, draw it a little bit to the left of center, guys. So put it about one third of the way to uh, over on the left there. So the, the line, the, the lens, don't make it quite in the middle, your diagram won't fit. All right, now we need a scale for this one. This one's scale is gonna be pretty easy. We are gonna use one block is one centimeter in the X direction. One block is one centimeter. And just like a graph, 
you got to kind of guess and check on the scales. If you pick a scale and your diagram's too tiny, it won't be any use to you. And if it's too big, doesn't fit on the page, it won't be any use to you. So you got to kind of pick a scale, kind of fits. All right, so here's what we know from the problem. A 10 centimeter converging lens. That's the focal length, 10 centimeters. The object is a two centimeter tall candle. So the height of the object is two centimeters. And it's placed 15 centimeters from the lens. So that's the distance to the object is 15 centimeters. So we are going to mark the focal length on either side of the lens. So one block is one centimeter. So 10 blocks to the left, 10 blocks to the right. And then 15 blocks to the left, we're going to draw an arrow. And it'll be four, four blocks big, according to our scale. So go ahead and draw that. Some people hate this. They're like, this is the worst part of physics for them. Three years later, I asked, how is physics? They're like, I hated those diagrams. But for most people, this is like, it's OK. It's not so bad. It's not that hard. You just draw straight lines. Make it pretty. Which one are you going to be, Carly? Are you going to be the I hate those diagrams person? No. <laughs> OK. Ozair doesn't like the diagrams. He'd rather just use the math. If you like the diagrams, you're probably going to be an architect. If you hate the diagrams, don't go into architecture. Because that's all you do is draw really pretty, really accurate scale diagrams of everything. All right, give me a thumbs up if you're good. All right, I'm going to give you three minutes to see if you can draw the three rays of light. So from the very tippy top of your candle, one ray goes parallel and hits the lens, gets bent through the focal point and then keeps going off the page. One goes through the middle of the lens, it doesn't get bent. And then the one that goes through the focal point on the same side as the object gets bent parallel. Go ahead and see if you can draw those three and you'll know you're right if they all three meet in the same place. Okay, give it a try. All right, so let's take a look at my answer key here, see if you guys got close. One beam of light goes parallel, gets bent through the focal point. One beam of light goes to the middle, and doesn't get bent at all. And the beam of light that goes through the focal point on the near side and hits the lens, because it's coming from the focal point, it gets bent parallel. And all three meet up over here, so that's where the image of the candle is. Okay, 
And then by counting blocks and using your scale, you should be able to tell me the height of the image and the distance to the image. Any volunteers feel like they got a solid answer there? This is where you ask a question if you're stuck, guys, if you don't understand. Andres, that a volunteer? Excellent. What did you? How, what's the distance to the image? Uh, for the distance to the image, I got thirty blocks, so thirty centimeters. Excellent. And what about the height of the image? Um, I got four centimeters. Okay, so it started off at two centimeters, and the image ended up being four centimeters. So, what would you say the magnification is? Two. That's it. But it's upside down, so we're actually going to say negative uh, two. Negative two. Okay. So. Andres got it right. Here's what I got. The height of the image is negative four. The distance to the image is 30 blocks. And the magnification is negative two. It's two times bigger and upside down. Okay. Does that make sense? Do you have any questions about that? I'm going to turn you loose to do your own now. So if you have a question, this is a good time to holler. Let me show you one more slide. The algebraic solution looks like this. 10 centimeters is the focal length, so that's F. Two centimeters is the height of the object, that's HO. And 15 centimeters is how far the candle is from the lens, that's DO. So we're gonna solve for DI. Instead of writing one over F, sometimes we write F negative one, it means reciprocal. So you can also write it like this. When you plug that in, you get 30, which agrees with Andres. The magnification is the distance to the image of the distance to the object, so negative 30 over 15, which is negative 2. And if you know the magnification, you can find the height of the image. It's the magnification times the height of the object, or negative 4. So that's the algebraic solution. Okay? So what you guys are going to do is solve three problems for homework, where you're going to make a geometric solution, and you're going to make an algebraic solution, okay? Once you get to problem number four, you can just make algebraic solutions. They're not, they're, they're a little different. I give you like, I give you DI and DO, and I ask you to find F, which you can't do geometrically, at least not easily. So the first three are the ones I want to focus on right now. So that's what you're going to work on. Um, if you feel like you've got it and, uh, and you're good to go, you're welcome to leave. If you want to stay and ask questions, um, it's hard to help you. You're going to have to hold your paper up to the screen, okay, so, so I can help you with your diagrams and stuff somewhat. But I'll be happy to help you. I've got a meeting at 2.30, so I can hang on here till then. Class is officially over at um, 1.45, but you're welcome to stay on and keep working if you want to get help, okay? It's usually a lot easier to get help now than it is to email me at 6 in the evening when I'm keeping score for my daughter's basketball game and don't get back to you till 8. And I get back to you and I say, send me a picture, and then I get back to you again at 9.30. It takes forever, right? So if you have time, just stay on and get the first three done here. After that, you can work on them on your own time. All right. Okay, good luck. When you turn your work in, you're going to take a picture of your diagram and your algebraic solution. You can do the algebraic solution on the back of the diagram, you can do it in like an unused space in the corner of the diagram. So if you look at my screen here, like I didn't really use this space right here. You could make your algebraic solution there too if you want. But you're, um, you're going to have both algebraic and geometric solutions for the first three, okay? All right. I'll see you later if you don't have any questions, and I'll hang around if you do. And I'm going to stop recording now. So end of the recording.